and we're going to get right into the word of God. Glory be to God. As I think about God selfie, I think about God want us to dwell in a place forever. He want us to get in a relationship with him that we won't be moved to the right or won't be moved to the left. We won't be moved by what goes right or what goes wrong. We won't be moved by the things that we enjoy and the things that we don't enjoy. We won't be moved by tears. We won't be moved by pain or, or hurt or disappointment. God wants us to get in a place that we dwell with him forever. Amen. And the reason is that God wants to take a picture of us Really not with this selfie, but with the word of God. So just imagine this phone being the word of God. And God is, it, 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 is pointing the word at you that you may take a selfie. And look at the word and look at your life. And begin to dwell with him forever from that place. From the place of what the word said you are. That you begin to look at yourself from the eyes of God. That you would take a selfie from heaven. That, that, that you would take time to look at God and God look at you. And you get in the place that God wants you to be and you dwell there forever. You begin to allow God to look through your eyes, to look into your soul, and you be, allow him to declare who you are, your identity. That you begin to allow God to pull out the vision, begin to squeeze you. That you begin to draw near unto him, and he draw nigh unto you, and you begin to finally see who you really are. Not what you've been through, not what you're going through, but who you really are. That you will look into the heart of God and see why God created you and, and why you've been through what you've been through and why you cried like you cried and why you've been through what you've been through and why you struggle with what you struggle. Oh, finally, you will allow God to take a selfie and show you who you really are. The devil wouldn't fight you on every side if there was nothing inside of you. Amen. You must take time to allow God to take a selfie and show you who you are. But you can't be moving back and forth to take a self. You must dwell in his presence forever. Glory be to God. When we think about God taking a selfie of us, we must think about in Revelation chapter 12. And I'm going to read this from the Amplified Bible. And I'm going to read the first part of it because I'm focusing on God right now. There's a part that deals with the devil, but I'm focusing on God right now. And the Bible tells us, and I won't get much into this scripture today, but it says submit yourself unto God. Have you ever really submitted yourself to anything? When you submit yourself, that, that means you give your all to it. That you, you make your body and your mind a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And when you have done that, you realize that you have done just your reasonable service. When you submit yourself that you give up all your desires and all your dreams and you say, God, I'm here to be used by you. Yes. I'm talking about submit yourself yes. unto God. 
I'm not really focusing on the devil right now, but, but, but I'm, I want you to get a posture where you live your life where it's no longer about you, but it's about God. Yes. See, God can give you an identity and a vision and a mission to carry out until you submit yourself, until you come under the vision and the purpose that God has for you submission. Yes. And the Bible tells us here that, that, that in Revelation 12, chapter 12, verse 10, it said, Then I heard a loud, I heard a strong, loud voice in heaven. Mm -hmm. See, for you to take a selfie that, and get a true picture of yourself, that the voice that you must be able to hear and apprehend what he is saying and what he is doing, it must come from heaven. Okay. All other voices must be cut off. You must be able to shut out the world and embrace the voice of God. A loud voice it said in heaven, saying now it has come. Salvation. Salvation represents, when you study out the Greek word shalom, that means that God has provided for you everything. That's right. That's right. There's nothing lacking in you. So, Pastor, if, if, if everything is inside of me and I'm going around here and, and with my head down and I don't want to speak to anybody and my conscience is, it, 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 it's about down to the ground and I'm looking I'm more down than up and, and my attitude, I'm very moody and I always think the worst thing's going to happen to me instead of the best thing happening to me. That means that you don't know your identity. Okay. I see young boys and young girls in high school every day where their content is, it, 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 it's like I'm a loser and, and nothing good is going to ever happen to me. And, and they think it's just, it just like that. No, it's not like that. It's a strategy of the enemy. It's some way, somewhere, he has, a, he has been allowed to penetrate an area of your life to tell you that you are not who God said you are. And just, and, and, and just, it's all about, and I'm just flowing now, it's all about speaking. God said, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. See, you was born with all of that. That's why in the garden. The enemy came and he began to talk. He, he, he said, if I can give her my words and get her to start thinking and acting the way that my kingdom works. If I can begin to tell them there's a like in them, which there is no like in them. They was already like God. They was already made in the image of God. But if I can tell them that they're not, that means that They'll be disrespectful. They'll be rude. That they, they, they can't respect anybody because they don't respect themselves. Mm -hmm. So when you meet a boy or a girl, guess what? You send it out by that I'm nothing and I'll be nothing. So treat me like nothing. And you think you just acting like that just to act like that? No. The enemy has found a way to penetrate your thoughts. He starts speaking. And when he starts speaking, he said, I want you to think God is keeping something away from you and that you are missing something and that something is not inside of you. So when you find that type of situation where you feel like there's like in you, you feel like, you, you, you know, nobody loves me. And, and just, woe is me. You start going against the word of God. You don't start seeing yourself like God. 
God's trying to take a picture, but you won't be still. And everything you go through, and, and everything the enemy say to you, you start adapting to that. You start saying stuff like, oh, I feel like I'm going to catch a cold. Oh, I just love you to death. Yeah, I mean, you, you start saying words that add no life to you. You start saying things that won't cause you to go forward, but things that will keep you from moving forward in life. You start speaking death over yourself that, oh, I never get healed from this. Oh, oh no good things that ever happen to me. That's not the language of the kingdom of God. God began to tell us that in Revelation that his kingdom mm -hmm. is salvation. Everything. Nothing missing and, 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 and nothing absent. Amen. He said salvation and power. Amen. You have power inside of you. you he said and the kingdom that you got dominion. Amen. That you're supposed to reign. That's right. That you, 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 you're supposed to be the head. He said, he, he said, salvation and the power and the kingdom, dominion and, and the reign of our God. He said the power. He, he talks about sovereign authority yes. of his Christ, his Messiah, the anointed one that lives inside of you. Yes. So, Pastor, break it down so I really understand. I'm saying to you. If God give you a gift and a talent, and he give you entrepreneurship, and, and he give you ability to open up a business, if you don't be still long enough in God, you'll take that gift and that talent and you'll sell it out to the devil. Mm -hmm. Say, Pastor, break it down a little more now. We got young people in here. You don't want to lose them. I know one time I was in a classroom and we were talking about entrepreneurship. But because the hurt that was in the young man that spoke, his mama was here and there and everywhere. And he had to raise himself. And there was so much grief and pain in him until he stood up and said something like this. And the whole class, he had all of them rolling, boy. They was just rolling. You know how a fool can lead a whole lot of other fools leading them too. They was rolling, boy. He said, yeah. I'm going to up me a couple strip clubs and I'm going to make it rain, man. I'm going to All around the classroom, just jumping. Boy, they thought that was the funnest thing in the world. But I knew it came from a place of hurt. He realized that his mother was doing that. And I asked him one question. Sometimes you have to bring young people back to reality because they'll say anything except because they got a mouth. I asked him one question. I said, do you have a sister? Do you know he shrunk? Do you know the whole room got quiet? Because somebody got to be on that pole. Somebody got to be up there. Do you want your sister to be up there? I didn't say all that, but, but I'm saying when I asked that one question, do you have a sister? He, he began to sit down inside, and everybody else in there sitting down. What I'm saying to you, people don't say things just to be saying it. There's an influence. Mm -hmm. There's an enemy out there that keep giving them strategy, keep giving them thoughts, keep giving them words. So I'm just letting you know, don't think you're so young and cool and you got everybody laughing it's because it's you. No! Mm. There's somebody got a string mm. dangling you. Either you're a slave to God or you're a slave to the enemy. Wow. And here we're saying that God wants you to be still long enough that you can get your true identity to know who you really are. In verse 11 it says, and they have overcome, conquered him Amen. by the means of the blood of the lamb. Yes. 
Yes. In other words, by what Jesus have done. Yes. Dying on the cross, making a sacrifice. And then it said, by the utterance. In other words, of your testimony. The words of your testimony. Yes. See, you got to speak the result. Don't get caught up into the detail of working everything out. That's God's responsibility. Your responsibility is, is to speak the word of God. Speak the, 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 the utterance of the word. You, you have to speak it. Mm -hmm. That's your job. Mm -hmm. And it said that by the utterance of their testimony, for they did not love or cling to the life even when faced with death. They had such a grip on God and what God has done for them and what God brought them through and how faithful God has been in their life and to, even when they was faced with difficult situations and adverse situations, they knew that they can be still and know that he said he who he say he is, yeah. that he's more than enough yeah. in all situations. He's still enough. Yeah. When my mother passed, when she died and I feel like crying and never stop crying, you know how when you young and your mother died and there's just tears that, you know, when you're young, you play it off. You know, you got that cool stuff. And I try to throw that cool stuff in there, but the pain got The tears kept flowing. You know how you try to deflate people? I, I mean, you try to throw them this way because you don't want to see them. You want them to see the real pain that's in you. You know how you try to fake it? You know how you when you're young, you try to play it off. I tried to do it. But the pain was too great. And God began to say, hey, I want to take a selfie of you. I want you to see who you are in me. And when he took that selfie, he made me focus on him and see things like he said. So I got up there doing the home going service and I began to represent the great woman that raised me. I began to make her proud even from heaven. I, I, I begin to take my rightful place in the family. I begin to be a leader. And I begin to see myself like God. And God, the inner coming up. And when I looked at God and he looked at me, I begin to say, you're more than my sister. You're more than what I'm going through. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. So you see That we can go through that and still take a selfie. We still can be still long enough and look at God and see what God is saying and see what God is doing in the midst of my hurt. Well, Pastor, I want my hurt to be greater than everybody hurt because that provides me excuses. That provides me a reason not to do what God wants me to do. Can I have an excuse? Can I go through life? Woe is me. Can I find a reason to say nobody been through the trouble I seen? Nobody. Can I sing that song all my life? Or is God requiring you to move forward? Is he requiring you to say that God is my everything? God is my all in all. God is my beginning and my end, my alpha and my omega. That God is more than enough. What, what has been required for you to be still? And be able to get in the picture. Yeah, I know you've been close to the picture, but 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 we didn't have you in the view. Yeah, I I, I know you you you've been coming to church, but you never really truly worshiped. I know you sung in the choir, but the song never became no testimony. I I, I but, but Pastor, I'm gonna be. 
I, 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 I start losing stuff. Who you think telling you that you're going to lose when you give to God? Mm. Bring it down, Pastor. <laughs> it ain't God telling you that. It's the devil. The devil telling you that. That word is not true. It's more better to give than receive. No, don't believe. See, God is trying to take a picture of you. He's trying to get you in the, in, 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 in the picture. In, in, in the rest of the verse, I'm just going to flow through it. It tells us that Satan knows that his time is short. Mm -hmm. he, he, he knows that his time is short. And the Bible tells us that he's an accuser of the brother. He said he talk about you day and night. See, God is the creator. God is the one that's able to tell you who you are and allow you to take a, a, a selfie of him. But what the devil does, because he's an accuser of the brother, he focuses on your function. What you mean by that, Pastor? He focuses on what you did, what you done, and what you are doing. And he keep coming to you, telling you you ain't all of that because of what you did, what you done, and what you're doing. He focused on your function. Your function would never ever keep you out of hell. Your function does one thing. It keeps you from out of the will of God. See when you receive Christ as your savior. And Christ died for you. And I'm flowing now. He made you the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. Adam. I mean say Abraham wasn't the righteousness of God. David wasn't the righteousness of God. He, they was counted righteous. Mm -hmm. yes. But they had to wait at, at, at a place where Jesus had to die. And he had to, he, he had to defeat the enemy. And then he had to go to that place where they was captive. And captive them, he had captivity captive. So he got them from out of that place and took them with him. But we are the righteous. Say, Pastor, you you dressing me now. Pastor, you, you putting on the suit now. Now I'm not saying you counted as righteous. I am saying you are righteous. But Pastor, what if I was home mining and what I was in, in the back seat of the car last night? What I was hitting that blunt, Pastor? What I was with my ride and die, and we was riding and dying each other. What about that? Come to tell you one thing: how you are functioning. Yes. He talks about what you did, what you have done, mm -hmm. and what you're doing. And nothing has to do with taking a selfie. The selfie has to do with who you are. That's right. You are the righteousness of God. That's what the self is does with. The self is overcome the activity, the things. See, you think you're one thing because of what you do. No, you are who you are because of what Jesus mm -hmm. have done. Yes. Yes. See, the enemy confusing you. Oh, if you do yes. something wrong, you say, I'm no good, I'm not righteous. It's fooling you. See? He got you working on how you function, what you are doing, what you have done. But he never able to talk to you really about your identity because he's not a creator. Come on now. The only one that can identify you yes. as far as who you are is the one that created you. Amen. Amen. So the enemy somehow begin to tell you that you're not this and you're not that because of what you're doing. It's not what you have done. It's who you have received as your salvation, as your savior. Yes. The enemy will love for you to go through all your life and, and you to focus on your trouble. Yes. You to focus on all, all, all the things you, you tried to do right, all the things you tried to do wrong. Because he knows as long as he got you there, you'll never fulfill what he called you to do. The only way to fulfill what God has called you to do, it comes from a place of identity. It comes from a place of image. 
It comes from a, a place of God being able to take a picture of you and you look at God and God look at you. You look in the word and the word is able to look in you and you take that picture. That represents who you really are. That's selfish. Yes. Romans 5, 16. We're really 17. Romans 5, 17. And it says this. For if by one man offense, wow. death reigned by one. Yes, sir. And, and it talks about when Adam, Adam fell short. When he fell short, we all, even little babies, when they come in the world, mm -hmm. we all took on the sin nature. Yes. Whether we just took our first breath, whether we can't walk, it doesn't matter. When one man offense, death reigned by one man. But, hear this part, much more they that receive abundance of grace. Yeah. In other words, grace is unmerited favor. Yeah. You don't deserve it. You didn't work for it. You haven't earned it. But because of God, to you. Hallelujah. Receive abundance of Ooh, grace. Glory. And it said, and, the, and this is in the King James Version, and the gift, it's a gift, of righteousness shall reign in life with one, Jesus Christ. What that mean that? Because Jesus Christ died, now you become righteousness. But what if I haven't done any righteousness? You still become righteous. Yeah. Say, Pastor, but, but, but I did this last night. It's amazing to me how people can see themselves as a sinner because of what Adam done, but not as the righteousness because of what Jesus done. The scripture just told us that. He said he gave you abundance grace. Your sins are already taken care of. Your sins you did yesterday, today, and even the ones you haven't done tomorrow. He has already made you the righteousness of God. You cannot truly allow God to take a picture of you if you don't see yourself as the righteousness of God. Amen. You have an identity crisis. Mm. You have to see what Jesus has done to be able to allow him to take a selfie of you. You have to be able to lead the hurt and the pain and forgive yourself and others. So you don't live a life always being a victim. Woe is me always. You got to forgive yourself. Jesus already don't pay for it. If I take you to a nice steak restaurant and I pay for the meal, you just sit there with your mouth closed. That's on you. If I already don't pay for it and you can't open up and receive it, that's on you. Jesus already don't pay for you to see yourself like he see you. The righteousness. The righteousness. Romans 5, uh, uh, um, Amplified version here. For if because of one trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, mm -hmm. much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, mm -hmm. unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness mm -hmm. put them in right standing with Him. Hallelujah. Reign as kings. Okay, now. Amplify say you reign as kings. See. The devil don't ever want you to see yourself like that. Okay. Because if you see yourself like that, you're going to stop acting the other way. If you see yourself like a king, see, uh, uh, when, when, when a king is convinced that he comes from royalty, there was a story I read one time where they kept trying to give this king swine. They kept trying to give him, in modern day time, liquor, and kept, kept trying to give him high, and they kept, kept trying to give him these loose women, these whores, and, 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 and they know that after six months, the king wouldn't do it. And they wondered, what's the man in all He came to grip with the selfie who God said he is. Wow. God said he was a king. 
He received himself as being a king. And his mind couldn't think like a normal serpent. His appetite wasn't the same. His vision wasn't the same. He couldn't come down. He had to stand tall. Yes. He felt something in his spirit. Kept saying he was more than what he was going through. Mm. Glory be to God. Yes. The Bible says you're a king. Are you ready to take your selfie now? As the king? He, it it, 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 it said we reign as kings. It's talking about who you are. It said we reign as king in life through one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. That's the one that desire to live inside of us. Micah 4 9. Micah 4 9. I remember playing football one time. I didn't really see myself as that much to be in the beginning. I messed around there and scored one time, and I was like, whoa, what happened now? I really wasn't expecting too much more to happen, though, because, you know, I didn't have that king type of mindset. Then I scored again, then, oh, boy, some shifted in me. I started I start getting dressed a little different from the other players. We had on the same uniform. Every game I walked in. Stop being scared. You know how it is when you're young, you, you know, you, you're just scared. And, and, and you can't really, you know, tell nobody that you got fear inside of you, you're scared. So you, you, you try to play it off by a walk. Sometimes you play it off by a joke. Sometimes you, you just be silly. You start talking about the mama jokes and, and just a whole lot of things because you want to hide, you want to masquerade that you're scared. To be who God called you to be. Because it, it, it draws attention. It calls the light to come on you. And the Bible said like this. That when God begins to tell you who you are. There's a bright light that shines on you. And it gets hot. And you have to be able to stand the heat. Because you know that God is with you. And he'll never leave you or forsake you. So you start putting all your trust in him. And allowing God to speak for you. God to lead you. God to guide you. So you be still. And you know that he's God. And you know beside he there is no other. So you begin to walk in who he mm -hmm. Even if you have to walk by yourself. So when I came on the field, I was number 10, but everyone kept saying, you number 10 on your jersey, but you number one in the heart. I would let my light so shine before men. They began to see what God saw in me. Amen. Do I have to overcome a lot of stuff? Yeah, I was stuttering. Yeah, my eyes went different ways. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I had all that crazy stuff going on, just like young people do. But you know something? I ignored all that foolishness. I kept listening to the voice of God. What God kept saying, who I am. Michael 4, 9. See, Jesus did everything as a king with God living in him. You have to acknowledge God living inside of you. You have to acknowledge that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And, and Michael 9, 5, he said, Now why is thou crying out aloud? Why thou just crying like there's no hope? Why is that ready to give up? We all go through what we go through, but we have to know our hope and our trust is in Jesus. Amen. And then he begins to say, Is there no king in thee? Are you just ignoring who God said you are? 
Is there no queen in you? But Pastor, I, I, I don't slept with so many men and to, but God is, is going to uh, 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 call you, 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 you a virgin again. That's right, man. That's right. Only God can do it. He's going to call you back to himself. But what have I got to a, a virgin? Only God can make you a virgin again. That's right. I remember one time I got caught up with like the world. The world stopped calling me Slick Rick and all of this and that. And I stopped slicking my hair to the side trying to be like <laughs> Slick Rick. I got caught up. I'm thinking I'm some pretty boy. I'm thinking I'm made for the girls. God say the devil is a liar. You made for me. That's it. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm make you holy again. I'm going to let you see yourself different. I'm going to let you stop valuing your mind and your body. So I went one day. Then I, I made it to four days. Then, then, then I, I went one week. Then I made it to four weeks. Then, then I, made, I went one month. Then I made it to four months. Then I went one year. Then I made it to four years. I stopped valuing myself. I stopped seeing myself like God see me. I stopped being still so God, so I can see what God is saying about me. This is who you are, son. I have set you aside for me. I have called you to do great and mighty exploit. I'm going to raise you up that you will raise up generation. You will raise up kings. I will call generations. You shall go forth to do And even when God see all of that, the devil starts saying, well, you, you know, there's some things you don't know how to do. God said, I knew that before I called you. <laughs> I knew that before I called you. Like Moses said, oh, oh, oh I can't talk. I wonder why I called you. Oh. <laughs> See, your generation don't need more money. They just need more of you that can look in the word of God and see who God said you are. Mm -hmm. That's what's lacking in your generation. Well, my daughter needs a father. Yeah, he might need all that, but he, he needs you. To take a selfie. But uh, he don't play child support. If you're willing to be still. My forever. Wow. And allow God. To say who you are. And what you can do. And what you can accomplish. Well Pastor it ain't easy. Well it wasn't easy for Jesus to get on the cross. But he did it. Right okay now. What about you? And, 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 and pretty much my I'm about to close here because I haven't really got into what I want to get into, but I think it's enough for you to take a selfie though. Mm -hmm. I think it's enough for you to be still. I think you heard enough word that your life will be changed. I think you heard enough to Place. I'm going to just touch it, but I ain't going to get on it. A, a, a place of being comfortable and, and, and not taking any challenges and not taking any risks. I, I think it's enough for you to move from that place. I think it's enough word given today that you won't be complacent. That you won't just do tradition and never take an evaluation and see whether this working. How's my life going? I think it's enough for you not to be consumeristic and just focus on yourself and not focus on the will of God. I think you have gotten enough word today to make those decisions. Amen. John 14.10. See, we talked about it, but John 14.10, it basically says that Jesus speaks and God is doing the work. You have to open up your mouth and you have to declare that you win. Amen. Well, Pastor, what if I take a stand for God and, 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 and I preached last week 
and then the enemy tried to make my stomach and my body act up three o'clock this morning. Well, yeah, yeah. All go go do something, but you still make your way in the house of God. Amen. 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 I, I I love when my daughter she preached last Sunday so mightily, and and then about three o'clock this morning her body and everything started acting up, and we all was up and didn't get much sleep. But 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 then I left it up to her because see she gonna have to take her own selfie. She got to see, look at God and, and see what God said about her. And she said, Daddy, well, 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 I, I'm, I'm feeling better. I'm coming into service. See, they, they got to use their own faith. See, at, at some point, they got to stop being accountable for who God is in them. You can't keep blaming yourself for hell for what they're not doing. You don't have no heaven or hell. Your daughter and her kids here. They got to learn to have a relationship with the master. Amen. Your faith won't do it for them. He said he gave every man a measure of faith. You keep blaming yourself for what they won't do. You may try to get out of the will of God for your, yourself. You give them the word of God. Now they got to use it. That's right. And it tells us that it said, "Believers, doubt not that I'm in the Father. This Jesus now, and the Father is in me. See, that's that kingship he's talking about. Yeah, I'm going through a lot of stuff, and I'm being betrayed, and I'm being spit on, I'm being beaten, I'm, I'm being all, all of that. But I, I got to acknowledge who I am." Believers doubt not that I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. See, to take that selfie, you got to say that. Because mm -hmm. that's what God is saying to you, that I'm in you. You have the knowledge that I'm living in you Amen. to be able to take the selfie. And then he, he, he said that the words which I speak unto you. I speak not of myself. They're not my words. These are the words that's in the, the Bible. I just made them my words. But they come from the Father. The words that I speak unto you. I speak not of myself. This don't come from me. But it comes from God. Yes. I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwells in me. See there's a dwelling in you. There's a Holy Ghost dwelling in you. Hallelujah. See, you got to learn how to be still and allow him to speak and, and, and allow him to dwell. Like the song said, dwell in me forever. You have the knowledge that he's dwelling in you. Well, Pastor, can you just speak it and make me believe that he dwells in me? No. Mm -hmm. Can you come in agreement with the word? Yes. You got to take your own self. That's it. You have to allow God. You have to allow God to hold up his word. And you have to believe and decree that God, I believe and receive that you are living in me. And great is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Yeah. You have to let allow God to talk to you. Yeah, God, I, I, I see that I can do all things. It may not be easy, but God, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You have to allow God to take the selfie. But see, for you to be able to allow God to take the selfie, you must acknowledge. You got to say. You got to believe. The Father that dwells in me. It's he that do the work. Yes. Let me understand, Pastor. I, I, as I close, I, I don't want you to miss it. Jesus saying that he's speaking. He acknowledged that the Father is in him and he's in the Father. Uh -huh. And he's acknowledging that the Father lives in him. It dwells in him. 
And it said that the Father does the work. But what if I don't open my mouth and speak? Well, you, you really don't have to. It's up to you. I'm here as your pastor just giving you the word of God. You, the, the word of God said that if you speak, he'll do the work. If you speak the word of your life, he'll do the work. You don't even have to do the work. You just have to believe the word and speak the word. That's it. And he said he'll do the work. There's something God desire, and this is in my closing, to do inside of you. You've been waiting a long time. You've been blaming a lot of people. You've been going through a whole lot. But God said none of that has to, anything to do with it. I need for you to get before me in my word and speak the word. And I'm going to move on it. Wow. I'm going to do just like I did in the beginning. Wow. It said when God began to, to speak, it said the spirit began to form the earth. The spirit began to move on the earth when God speak. For you to take a selfie, you got to speak who God is to you. The Bible says you're a king, you're a queen. The Bible speaks that God lives inside of you. God, God that, that salvation has been given to you. Everything you will ever need. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Amen. You have to acknowledge that you are the righteousness of God. Amen. It's time to take a picture. Are you ready? Amen. God is looking at you and saying to you, you are Christ-like. You are just like me. Mm. I made you in my own image. But Pastor, that's hard to believe. No, not if you see it in the Word. Mm. Not if you see it in the Word. You got to speak it. You have to speak it. I just want to pray for you real quick and then we're going off the air. But I want this Word to really sink into you. Dear Heavenly Father, you say you dwell in us. Allow us to be still long enough for you to give us a real good image of who we really are. Because without that image, we'll act like anybody. We'll do anything. We'll say anything. We'll have no respect for ourselves and no respect for anyone else. But God, if we acknowledge that you dwell in me, and that I'm a king. And that you created me in your own image. And you created me that I would have dominion in my voice. That my voice would be able to activate and create the world that you have set in place for me. And you will do the work. That it is a done deal. So God, I pray right now that we will have more than hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Yes. I pray that people wouldn't just come to church and their life never change and they just get comfortable and, and do the same thing and never evaluate whether things are working, that they would just be so comfortable with the same people that they never evangelize. Oh God, shake us and mold us, God. Yes. Oh God, let us see who you see. In us, God. Yes. Oh, God, let us steal away and hear your voice and hear how you brag about us and how you talk about us and how you see so, so much great things inside of us. Yes. Bless your people today, God, like never before, God. Let a revival start, God. Let families come together and pray, God. And God, even as we come uh, upon this Christmas season, God. Season, God. We, we ask God that the focus would be on Jesus. Yes. Not on gift, buying kids, everything. But making sure they have a relationship with Christ. Oh God, let us raise up our kids in the word of God. Yes. That's the greatest gift we can give them. 
to make sure that they receive you as their savior and that they have eternal life and they don't end up in hell. There's no greater gift that you can do or give yes. than to raise them up. Mm -hmm. I pray that your life has been richly blessed. We thank you today. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow and hearing the testimonies. God is doing great and mighty things. Miracles are happening as we speak. Be blessed and God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.